So um, thank you for coming to my session. Uh, stop wasting time and become more productive. I know um, we all waste a lot of time in all of the things we do, so um, everyone's always looking for ways to um, be more productive in the tasks that they have to do on a regular basis. So I'm going to be going through a couple of slides. I'm going to be asking all of you a lot of questions. I'm going to make it very interactive um, of a session. OK. OK, that's good. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be making it a very interactive session. I'm going to be asking a lot of questions um, because really you don't want to be listening to me the whole time. You want to um, be able to talk about what the problems that you're experiencing, your processes are, and how can we um, utilize some structured tools to improve those processes. Uh, stand on the podium? Um, I generally prefer not being stuck behind a podium, but I can try. <laughs> okay. Okay, no problem. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, okay. So a little bit about me. Um, my background is I'm a Six Sigma black belt. So uh, for those of you that are not very familiar about it, Six Sigma is a methodology of continually improving your processes so you're not um, experiencing problems. It's a very repeatable uh, standard type process so that every time you go to do that uh, methodology, you're able to execute it without experiencing issues. You're able to um, get it done in the time that you expect to do it in. And um, it re it's very repeatable. The um, other part of, uh, I do that full time and I've been doing that for about eight years. The other thing I do is I'm an affiliate. That's part of why I'm here at Summit. Um, I've been doing that for about three years and um, I developed my own website, uh, inkdatabase.com uh, for that. So I use a lot of my Six Sigma methodologies in my affiliate world as well as um, working full time doing Six Sigma. Now, uh, from a show of hands, how many of you in the room are affiliates? Okay. Uh, how many networks or agencies? Okay. Merchants? Okay. So it looks like a good mix of all of them. Uh, we look like we have a lot more affiliates. Now, do most of you work um, in larger companies or are you um, pretty much individual um, on your own? So how many individual um, work on your own type? Okay. About half. And then the rest of you work in companies with groups of people? Yep. Okay. Good. I just like having a baseline of, you know, where does everyone stand in the room just to get a calibration of where I should gear my slides towards. So um, the types of things that I want to accomplish during the session is first uh, help you understand what type of problems exper do you experience in your process. So being able to recognize what are those type of problems and then finding out what type of um, problems are more repetitive. You know, if we experience a problem once every, you know, five years, why do we really need to work on improving that and eliminating it completely? But if we experience a problem as we're doing our processes on a daily basis or even more, more than daily, on a regular basis, then we really want to kill those problems and eliminate them from even happening to begin with. Then what I'm going to go through is a couple of techniques to resolve the systemic issues that are causing those problems. So a lot of times we try to solve the problem just by putting a Band-Aid on it and just resolving the problem so we could just continue working. But uh, what I'm going to be going through are some techniques that we can then look at those problems in aggregate and um, elim eliminate them from happening to begin with. And then the last thing is I want this to be a fun and interactive session. As I said at the beginning, I don't want to be talking the whole time. I want to pull you in and really hear what are some of the problems that you're experiencing and um, how are you using um, some of these methodologies or how can you use some of these methodologies to improve your process. Okay, sound good? Okay. So I want to do a fun exercise. Um, and I set it up down there because I was planning on not being up here on this podium. Um, but um, I need a volunteer. Who wants to volunteer? Okay, great. What's that? 
<laughs> yes. Okay. So for this, I do have to come down here. So, okay. So um, I wanted to set up an exercise to really just show an example of some of the problems that we may experience as we're doing a process. So a lot of the examples I have throughout this pitch are more generic problems, not really tied to affiliate world, but I'm going to be relating them back to the affiliate world, um, just because all of us can relate to those type of things. So this exercise is assembling a pen. So I have here um, basically a pen that I've disassembled, and I'm going to just kind of show you how to assemble the pen, and then I'm going to ask you to make me two um, pens. That's pretty much it. So what you do is you take the bottom part of the pen, you put in this spring, you insert the ink part of the pen. Okay. Oops. Yeah, see I'm experiencing problems. Okay, then you take the top part of the pen, there's a little clicker part, and then a, a little white piece that goes in there. And then you just screw it together. Sure, Pretty simple. Okay. okay, so here's a bag of parts. Let's make two parts. Now what I want everyone in the audience to do is kind of look at what are some of the problems that she's experiencing as she's putting this together, if she experiences any problems. Um, and if you're experiencing any, any issues or anything like that, just mention them to me and I'll repeat it for the whole group. Well, okay, I'm missing um, Oh, you're parts. missing a part? Okay, well I think I might have an extra one over here. So I have an uneven number of parts actually. I have two bottoms, three tops, three clicky things. Oh, so there's an uneven amount of stuff? Okay. So you said you want an extra um, one of the ink parts, yes. okay. I can trade you that for two of these. Oh. Okay, well, so I noticed you gave me a red one and a black one. So why <laughs> is there a red? I, I, just, I don't know. I just so, gave you the two parts. So it looks like there's an uneven amount of parts, some of it being red and some of it being black. Okay. Does the color matter? You didn't say I needed to be color coordinated. Yeah, I mentioned black um, pens. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Oh, good. So here, I'll give you this. Okay. And then I don't actually, did I do this right? I don't know. Let's see if it works. <laughs> okay, so we got one pen that looked like it worked. Good. Oh, that makes me think that this one's not going to. Okay, very good. So we got two pens. Yay. So um, what were some of the problems that you heard that, thank you. Yeah. So what were some of the problems that you heard um, her have? Missing parts. Missing parts, okay. What else? Different colored parts. Different colored parts, okay. What else? Too many parts. Too many parts. So there were some of them that we had too many parts, some of them that we were missing, what else? Right, exactly. So there weren't really any instructions or anything that really said how to assemble the pen. It was just me showing her at the beginning. Um, so n not enough information if there was colors matching or not. What else? Any other things? Okay, good. I think that was all the problems that I put in there. <laughs> so you can see in what we do, we always experience problems, but what we're really um, what really happens in our brains is we just figure out how, to, how do we overcome those problems to get the task done. So um, I'm going to go into kind of what is waste. So waste is a lot of the non-value added tasks, the things that are unneeded, unnecessary that we go through that the customer is not willing to pay for. Ultimately, we're here to um, deliver value to the customer. Now, the customer might be the end user of the product or the customer might be um, someone downstream from you. Um, and they're really there to pay you for what you're doing um, on your processes. And um, waste is anything that you're doing that's unneeded or unnecessary. So many of the things that we had here was we had to go back and find extra parts. We had to figure out which parts were not necessary. Um, in a perfect world, we should have been able to just stand there, assemble the pen, be done in five seconds. But you could see that it took us a little while to do that, right? So waste is something that the customer is not willing to pay for that we can um, kind of eliminate from our processes. Okay. So I already asked this question. I forgot I put a slide in here that said it, but what were some of the problems that she experienced? Okay. So why do we want to reduce problems? 
we want to reduce problems to increase our customer satisfaction, right? So what if we had delivered that pen to our ultimate customer and had the wrong color ink or we uh, delivered a, a pen that didn't work or was missing parts? Would our customers be happy with that? No. So the other thing, other reason why we do it is to increase our productivity. If we spend, you know, 30 seconds a pen experiencing problems that we're going through it, we're able to produce less pens going forward, right? So we, we try to reduce the problems in order to um, increase the amount of throughput that we can deliver to our customers. Increased employee satisfaction. So if we're going through the process of doing this and we're always running into problems, we get frustrated, right? So the problems that we experienced here with the pens were a very small, minor type of problems, but those are the type of things that we experience that um, really frustrate us, annoy us, things that cause us to swear, you know, we get very upset with it. And then the last one, which doesn't really apply too much um, in this example, is to reduce costs. So what if we had product defects that we had to basically throw away the pen because it was damaged to the point where we couldn't use it anymore. So um, it, you may have scrap or other items that you have to, you know, just throw stuff away and or rework in a way where it's costing you more money. So we may also want to reduce problems. Now, not every problem um, results in all four of these, but these are more of the generic reasons why we try to fix those. Okay. So how do you know a problem happened? So a couple of the ways that I mentioned is product defects. So one of the ways that you know that you have a problem is if it doesn't work. If the problem actually has a, a problem with the physical item itself, it, you experience a problem. Now, all of us are affiliate marketers or in the internet world. What's our product? What's the product that we may have? And yell it out. Our website. Our website software, okay? Information. Uh, uh, recommendations, right? So in the internet marketing world, our problems that we experience are not physical things like the pens or other products that you may experience, uh, you may have uh, physically, but our, pro our products are, you know, digital or electronic. So a product defect, what would be an example of a product defect? You, Eric, you mentioned websites. So what would be a product defect with our website? Uh, an error. An, a 404 error, okay. Exactly. So product defects that we may experience are errors in websites, maybe bad information. I heard information is one of the things. Software, so software that doesn't do as it's designed to do. It's our products not working the way we um, designed them to do. And then we have to actually rework that product. We have to go back in, spend more time redoing the product in order to get the errors or um, issues with it fixed. Another example might be um, excess processing. So putting more work into the product than is necessarily required. So with the example that we had on the pens, we had to go back finding um, the extra parts. We had to sift through the, um, uh, the missing parts. We had to go back and sift through the excess parts that we had and separate out the ones that were a different color. Um, we had to do extra work than really should be designed in our process. So what may be some extra uh, processing type problems that you might experience in the internet marketing world. Going back and fixing broken links. Going back and fixing broken links, okay. 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 Now, what if we had to write, let's say, a blog post and we didn't have all the information we needed, so we had to stop writing the post, go get more information, and then come back and try and remember where we were um, before we can continue on that post? Would that be some excess processing? Yeah. Okay. So we may experience a lot of those type of problems as well. And then I always like putting a catch-all um, of frustrations doing the process. So I always ask the qu uh, question, if there's something that makes you want to swear, vent, complain, you know, bang your fist on the table, problems that you're experiencing, those are probably things that you want to capture as, you know, I'm experiencing this a lot and I want to reduce those ultimately, right? 
I always say, you know, what makes you want to swear or go on Twitter and complain? Those are probably problems that are big enough that you want to collect and uh, improve. And then I also put here, um, when things don't go as designed. Now, there are a whole lot of other ways to identify problems, but these are the ones that would most likely apply to you. Um, there's a book called The Toyota Way, which is the um, Toyota's methodology of their production system. Uh, that book has um, eight different types of waste uh, that you may experience, um, some of which may not apply to the internet marketing world, such as excess transportation. If we're moving a product from here, sending it to China to process it here, and then sending it to New York to process, and then come back to um, Vegas, why did we ship it all around the world? We wasted extra time shipping it. It might get damaged on the way. So there are a whole lot of other problems that might experience, but these are some of the ones that I would bet that you probably experience in your day-to-day -day -day lives. Okay, so what are some of the problems that you experience? So I want to hear some examples. Non-standard data. Non data. So um, can you tell us a little about that and maybe go to the mic and kind of say um, a little bit about that? Sometimes the uh, coupon feeds or product feeds okay. uh, are not tagged properly. They may have bad links, like someone mentioned. They, they may have errors in the, the coding. Sometimes there is no feed. Okay. <laughs> That's even a worse problem. Right. Uh, and, and so we have to uh, basically cut and paste and type in the old-fashioned way and make right. it work. Okay, good. So it sounds like your site is very automated if the product feeds or everything is designed um, and comes in exactly as your site is built. But if there's a feed missing or if the links are bad, then you have to go in and manually adjust everything. And that um, creates a lot of extra time and um, wasting the methodologies that you're using. Any other problems that you might experience? Landing page problems. Okay, can you maybe tell us a little more about that? Yeah, um, so our site has multiple products available for uh, specific design. Mm -hmm. So the landing page might not be the correct product when it comes from uh, search engines. Okay. Okay, good. So problems, uh, the landing pages that come in from the search engines might not be the products that you're linking to. Okay, good. Okay. So. Normally what we do in our process, when we have a problem, what do we normally do? We overcome the issue and then we keep working, right? You know, we experience a problem, then we say, oh, a problem happened. I gotta get over this issue. And then we just keep working on. Now, what if that problem happens again tomorrow? And then the day after that? So what we normally do is we band-aid the issue. We say, oh, I'm missing data. I gotta go get the data. I got um, data feeds that aren't in the right format. I got to go rework that data feed and then get it into my site. And we just continue working and we're always experiencing many of the same types of problems. So I put together this um, chart, um, which is in a slide or two, but um, let me jump ahead. So um, I put together this chart saying, you know, let's say we were to make 100 pens. What were some of the problems that we maybe had? Maybe we had difficulty getting the parts because they weren't all where they should have been. Missing parts. So we had parts that were missing, as we saw in that example. We had too many parts in some cases, right? And then instructions were incorrect. So it wasn't very clear on whether to use the red um, pen part or the black pen part, right? So we experience a lot of problems. And if we're looking at this kind of data, what should we really be resolving in this scenario? the far left, right? So the difficulty getting parts, it seems like it happens way too frequently compared to a lot of the other ones. So if we're able to collect the data that we're experiencing the problems on, and you're not expected to collect all of the data you're experiencing, but all the problems, but um, a lot of the times, the things that are big enough for you to notice them and complain about them, those are the type of things that you may collect. 
if you look at the data, you'll find out that there is a, a small subset of problems that always seem to happen. And Mike mentioned it really well, saying, you know, my data feeds are my biggest problems. Most of the times you can ask a person, what is the thing that's driving you crazy that if you can just reduce the amount of problems you're having with it, it would make your life so much easier? And most of the time people will know exactly what that type of thing is, right? So going back to the exercise, um, I didn't really have um, too many recurring problems, but you know, were there some problems that were more severe than others, right? Yes, so which one was more severe than other ones? Not having, enough, enough parts. Not having enough parts. So without the enough parts, we couldn't make any pens. With excess parts, you know, we could still continue on. We just have to spend more time sifting through it. So you may have some problems that are more severe than others. And you want to prioritize your efforts, um, not only on quantity, but you may want to focus it based on other factors. You know, time, money, um, frustration. So although difficulty getting parts might be the tallest one on this chart, you may find out that missing parts really brings your line to a stop. So in your processes, you may have some problems that um, you may experience more often than not. Um, and then you might find that some pr uh, problems are more painful than others. So you want to make sure that when you're trying to resolve the problems um, um, rather than band-aiding them, you want to uh, work on the problems that will really drive the impact to your business, drive the impact to your satisfaction, um, which may not be the one that's the highest bar on the chart. It may be something that's lower down on the chart, but it's just that much more painful that it, you experience. Okay, So I mentioned this top part where a problem occurs, then we overcome the issue and we just keep working. One of the techniques that um, I would recommend uh, for um, this would be then to track your problems. So, you know, have a simple way of just saying, oh, that problem happened again. Um, I've seen a lot of groups um, just put check marks next to a major category. So for a week they'll track, or a week or a month, they'll track what are some of the issues that they're experiencing. Just what are the names of them. And then next to them they'll put check marks next to it so that they're going to be able to create a Pareto chart like we saw earlier, a chart that shows uh, quantity um, along the um, graphs of what happens the most. For the ones that are happening a lot, we want to fix it systemically. So solve the underlying issue rather than just trying to put a band-aid on it and just um, continue on. Um, I always give the example of, let's say you have weeds in your lawn. So most people would say, okay, let's just cut off the let's just mow the lawn so that the weeds are gone. Well, the root of the weed is still in the ground, and a week from now, it's gonna just grow back up again, right? So there are tools and methodologies to um, systemically eliminate the root causes and make it so that the problems will never happen again or will happen significantly less. So using those methodologies, we would then systemically fix those repeating issues. We wouldn't use this methodology on every problem, otherwise you're going to be spending more time analyzing than you are working. Um, and then eliminate those problems completely. Now, many of you are affiliates that are pretty much on your own, so you might be thinking, wow, this is a lot of work for tracking individual problems and things like that. And it's true, I mean, I've seen this works best in small groups of like five to ten people because you may be experiencing a problem, the person sitting next to you might be experiencing the exact same problem. So um, this applies, to, I would say, to everyone, but it makes a lot more sense and people are able to relate to it better in a small group or a team. Um, but I personally use this methodology, I know my personal trainer uses this methodology, so we have um, other examples of people using this. And I have a real example that I actually experienced um, coming up later in this pitch. So. We would then systemically fix that issue and then eliminate that problem completely or reduce it significantly. So there's, um, we, there's some tools and techniques that are there for um, systemically solving that issue. Um, and like I mentioned, you want to prioritize it based on the impact. So you might be able to impact it based on the quantity, as I mentioned, which one has the most occurrences. 
you know, if it's happening so frequently that it's bugging you, then um, maybe you want to reduce that so it's not, you're not having that problem anymore. Um, maybe it's based on time. You may find that certain problems that you're experiencing, although they happen very frequently, they don't really take much time to just overcome and resolve. While other problems that you may experience, it will eat up a lot of your time and really cause um, more pain, which is the next one, than the other ones. So you may find some problems that you experience to be annoying, but you know, it's, you could deal with them, you don't really feel much pain around them, but then there might be other problems where you're ready to pull your hair out and you're ready to scream. So you may want to solve those problems and eliminate those from happening. Um, and then I put money in here because, of course, everything always relates back to money, but you may find out some problems are cost, costing you more money. So I, in this world, I would say broken links probably cost you more money than, let's just say, typos or um, problems that you may experience on your website. A broken link results in not getting a sale or something like that. So you may want to prioritize it based on money as well. So there are many um, tools that you can use to go for root cause analysis. Root cause analysis is the methodology of um, figuring out what is the underlying systemic issue and um, solving it to begin with, uh, d solving the underlying issue. So one of the most common tools is called the five whys tool. Um, and essentially that tool talks about asking whys repeatedly. And I'll give a couple examples of this um, coming up. Um, another tool that people use, uh, especially in a group, is called the fishbone diagram, which is a tool for brainstorming. So it's a tool where you would look at what problems am I experiencing, what are some of the potential causes of that, and you come up and brainstorm as a group what, are the, what could be the causes of that problem. And then using the data that you've collected, then um, taking a look at those causes and saying, well, this problem could have been caused by this one and this one, this problem could have been caused by this cause or this cause, and um, finding out what are the most likely causes based on that. Um, and then driving to uh, the corrective action that fixes the underlying issue. Um, another tool that I personally like is called the fault tree, and it uses um, kind of the, both of the methodologies of the five whys and fishbone, so it almost takes both of those and combines it together um, in a methodology where you're thinking of what are some of the potential causes, and then you're using the data to figure out, okay, it's not this one or that one, and then drilling in deeper on the ones that it's most likely caused by. And I have an example of that. And there are a whole lot more other tools. Uh, if you just do a Google search on root cause analysis, you'll get thousands of results. You'll get a whole lot of examples. I actually brought an example of a book here that is um, a black belt memory jogger. This whole book has examples of root cause analysis tools. So there's a whole lot of examples that um, of uh, methodologies you can use, but I'm just going to talk about the first, uh, first one and the third one on this chart. So the five whys methodology is something that you can use, and it's a methodology of repeatedly asking the question why to get to the root causes. So um, people always say, okay, it's five whys, does that mean I always have to use five? No, you always, you have to use whatever you, however many times to get to a cause that's systemic in nature. So um, in the textbooks and in a lot of examples, there's um, a good example of the five whys of a, a car won't start. So we have a car, it's not working. So we say, okay, why won't the car start? The battery's dead. So if we weren't using this root cause analysis methodology, we'd just say, oh, the battery's dead, I just gotta get a new battery, right? But if we find out that this problem is happening a lot or regularly, that's when this problem is a, um, a good, it's good to use this tool. So why won't the car start? The battery's dead. Well, why is the battery dead? And then after a little investigating and digging in deeper, we find out, well, it's because the alternator's not working. Okay, why is the alternator not working? Because the belt is broken. Okay, well, why is the belt broken? We didn't replace it based on what the manufacturer said to replace it at. Okay, why didn't we replace it? Well, we had no way of keeping track of our repair schedules that we needed to. So the fix for this is figure out a methodology of tracking your repair schedules so that you're always doing it on time. 
Now you'll notice this doesn't only fix the battery dead problem, but it may fix a whole lot of other problems that you experience with your car because you could have experienced problems where, okay, the battery's dead today, now you got um, a flat tire from not checking the pressure, right? So you may experience other problems that all lead towards this root cause. So putting in this fix in place should hopefully resolve a lot of the problems called um, car issues. Now it doesn't eliminate them completely, but at least you know that not putting in the repairs on time is not the cause of why you're, issue, why you're experiencing problems with your car, okay? The fall tree is another tool where it's looking at the data and drilling in deeper. So if we were to look at the missing parts example, we would say, okay, why did we, why do we have missing parts? So a couple of the potential causes could be, well, we didn't know we needed that part. Another one could be that we had it, but we lost it. Another could be that the parts, we already took it and we didn't know about it, right? You could come up with a whole lot of other um, potential reasons for that, but you wanna look at your data and help it drive where your uh, potential causes are. So based on that, you would then look at your data and you would say, okay, well, I know based on this, I never did lose it. Um, parts already taken, although it happened, although we had missing parts 20 times, this bottom one only happened once. So it's really not a major cause of the problems I was experiencing. It really was parts not needed, parts, um, uh, the need for the parts, we didn't anticipate that. So you would then take that and you would drill in deeper and say, well, why didn't we anticipate the need for that? Well, we didn't have a list for the parts that we needed, or there was a change in demand that we needed a lot more parts than we expected to. So you could use those um, methodologies to figure out that, and then you drill deeper and you say, well, it really was that we didn't have the list. There was really no change in demand, so I'm not gonna go down that path. And um, we find out we have no method of tracking the parts that we need for this product. We don't have a standard bill of materials, for example. So you could see this is a methodology that you use to drill deeper into your, um, the problems that you experience um, into each of the causes to get to the root cause of the problem. And then you put in a solution to address that root cause. So I wanted to show you a real example of, um, of my website. Um, I had a, this isn't the Inc. database one, this is one that I actually worked on with one of my friends. Um, but I thought this was a good, good example to kind of walk you through. So um, me and my friend, we were tracking a lot of the problems we were experiencing. And um, one of the biggest problems that we were happening, this was about over a two month time period, um, was the graphics were not lining up was one of the problems that we were experiencing where we would put graphics on and there would be more than one picture and of course they don't line up so it looks like, it looks really bad on the web page. Another problem that we were experiencing was an out of memory error. So when we would visit the website, we would, it would just say out of memory. And that one was really frustrating because the site wouldn't even load. Broken links, so we of course had broken links that we were experiencing. And then we had problems with video. We were trying to get YouTube stuff onto the website and we were just having problems. It wasn't loading properly, the, it was just a pain. So based on this, we actually decided to work on the out of memory errors because that one, we couldn't even have our website up and running if we were getting those out of memory errors. The graphics not lining up were painful, but you know, it's not perfect. Broken links we were able to overcome and deal with, but really we wanted to address and eliminate the out of memory error because without that, we have no website. So we started digging in deeper and we first started looking into the hosting server, we said, well, if it's out of memory, then it's probably related to our hosting provider. We looked at our content and we said, okay, well, maybe it's what we're putting on the website. And then the third thing we thought of was, well, maybe it wasn't designed properly. So we checked with our hosting provider and looked into the details and it was just our website that was having that mirror, error and it wasn't any other ones. So we said, okay, it's not that. So then we started looking at the content and how we were using it. So does this problem happen more when we post pictures? Does it happen when we post things on it? And we didn't find a correlation. We said, 
it's a random occurrence. It really doesn't look like it's happening at any specific point in time. So we then started digging into the design of our website and we said, okay, well, what's causing this problem? So we started digging in and looked at the design and we said, okay, well, is it related to the WordPress or is it related to plugins that we were having? And we looked at the WordPress settings, we looked at, we tried making a copy of the website and putting it on a different server. We were, when we had no plugins active, the website worked perfectly, um, except for what those plugins were um, uh, designed to do. So we said, okay, well, let's play around with the plugins. And we, one by one, turned one on, did some stuff on the site, and we troubleshooted it that way. And we found out the underlying issue was that the plugin was not designed properly. There was one plugin that we had custom built for our website, and it was not designed properly. So um, the, the corrective action that we put in place was we now test every plugin that, whenever we have to get a plugin put on our website, we test it with a whole bunch of different servers, we test it with a whole bunch of different um, uh, trying to use it to really make sure that it was designed to work and it won't cause us issues. So um, I just put up here a couple of references. Um, so uh, there's one book that I personally really like. Um, it's called The Apollo Root Cause Analysis Method. Um, this book is one that uh, kind of walks through a methodology that's similar to fault trees. It's not exactly the same, but it's one that I personally like. Um, there's a root cause analysis handbook. There's a book that's very good called The uh, Root Cause Analysis Simplified Tools and Techniques that I like. Um, and then there's a black belt memory jogger, which I showed you an example of earlier that um, I actually personally like uh, as a book as well. Um, but the other place that's a very good reference is Google. All of the methodologies that I talked about here are publicly available on Google. There's a ton of examples. Um, it's actually very good to find um, examples of that. And if you um, want me to send you a couple of links of some of these um, resources or guides, um, just come see me afterwards and um, I could take your card and send you links afterwards. Now I want to open it up to questions. Um, I think we have another 20 minutes or so at most. Um, but I just wanted to open it up for questions. You know, is there anything that you want me to dig into deeper? Or do you want to maybe give examples and I could kind of um, look at that or just wanted to open it up to all of you. Yep. Um, I think we need to use the microphone. Yeah. So one of my personal problems um, is that I have, um, I get inundated with questions every day. I have, um, you know, so I, I have something like 6,500 emails in my inbox right now. Wow. <laughs> and um, so in order to, I mean, it's just, it's purely just a question of how do I, you know, how do, that's a problem. I need to be able to answer those. Right. Um, and so any tips or tools that you might be able to provide in terms of how to, how to manage that or? So are you looking for tips and tools for like how to manage um, just getting inundated with the emails or? Yeah, I guess, I mean, because I sort of, the problem is I don't even, like, you know, you talk about doing an analysis of, you know, right. um, sort of cost benefit analysis of, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what's, what's worth my time and right. how do I know even <laughs> until I get through them? Right. Um, I don't know if you, you know, as a, do you have any good advice or resource or place to go? Um, so um, what are the type of questions that you would get asked? Is so, it, I mean, all right, so I, um, um, I work for a software company. We have three different lines of software. Okay. And so the questions will relate to how the software works, the kinds of sites okay. it works with. Um, it could be anything. It could be reporters okay. asking for questions about, I mean, it's a whole okay. variety of things. Okay, so one of the recommendations I would do for that um, would be to take a look at those emails that you're getting because as you mentioned, emails, you're in, getting inundated with them and you're getting tons of them. Take a look at them and say, if you were to lump them into five to 10 categories, where are those emails kind of falling into? You may find out that you know 50% of your emails are all related to the features of your software. You may find that 20% of them are related to bugs or issues with the software. You might find out that you know 
5% of them are related to reporters or things. And by looking at that, you might say, well, why am I getting so many questions about product design or product features? And you might dig deeper and analyze that and find out, well, maybe our website doesn't answer the questions that our customers are thinking of. And solve the underlying issue would be to update the website with that. I mean, that would be my recommendation, would be to um, take a look at your emails and bucket them into categories and figure out, are there any categories of emails that happen a lot that really you don't need to be answering via email, you have other methods of answering them. Okay. And I would just consider that. Okay. Uh, okay. Before I ask my question, one of the things that I do, uh, do you use Gmail? Okay, so in Gmail I have folders and then there's like um, on the tab when you do a little search you can filter. So you can actually have when somebody sends you a certain headline or somebody sends you emails from a certain email, it all goes filtered to that little uh, box. So that has like cleared out a lot of my stuff in my email because I'm on a lot of internet marketers list and whenever I get emails it goes into that box and it's already marked as red. So you know, whenever I want to look at sales copy or like email copy, I just go there and there's like list of stuff, but it's all out of my main inbox. So my main question is, uh, do you have any software or any kind of like um, tech tools that you use for productivity or just kind of streamlining your process? Um, I don't have any specific tools um, like that, but I know that for doing root cause analysis, there's a lot of automated tools available on the internet um, so that you don't have to manually create charts like this or do things. It actually um, asks you questions, so it says, okay, we had an out of memory error. What are some of the causes? And then it would kind of ask you those and then build you the chart for you. Um, I've seen um, tools and um, uh, programs like that. Um, I mean, for more complex method, there are a lot of statistical tools that you can use, but I think that's a little more complex than we really need here in the internet marketing world. We're not really producing parts that we got to measure key data on, or we're not doing the type of things that require the statistical software. Um, but I would say, no, it's really just um, the basic tools and just using them um, using the methodologies is really what it comes down to. And then there are always tools on automating that. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have a team of people that help produce some of the content for my website and, mm -hmm. you know, they all work remotely from home. And so this might seem like a silly question, but some of them I, I'm imagining if I were to say, okay, you know, here's a list of some potential problems. Let's track how many. Mm -hmm. They may have other problems, right, right, that aren't on the list. Right. But they may not even say that they're problems or they may not think that they're problems. Any tips or ideas, other ways to word that or to help coach people who may not be, they're just worker bee type people who are very willing to just push through and it can be hard to get the information back out of them. I'm like, what are you really dealing with? Exactly. And that's actually one of the questions I get on a very frequent base is, um, how do we get people to collect the data? How do we you know, encourage the collection of it? How do we even get people to recognize the problem? Um, there's a group of engineers that I was talking to once and we were talking about, well, what are the problems that you're experiencing on a regular basis? And you know, they were talking about software licenses, they were talking about computer related issues that they were having, not about anything engineering or design war like related. And we were talking to them and we said, well, how many times do you spend um, calling for more information or um, you know, collecting that? And there were, everyone's hands went up saying, yeah, we do that a lot. And we're like, so is that a problem? And everyone was like, no, that's my job. My job is to solve problems. And it's like, well, why is that what it is? Isn't your job to be designing stuff or drawing stuff? And they're like, well, yeah, but I, I have to get the answer to the problem in order to do that. So. It's really about r people recognizing the problems and um, seeing that. And a lot of times it just takes a little practice. Um, I always ask the question, what is the thing that if you could just eliminate or reduce, it would make your life easier? I ask it kind of like that because a lot of people will be able to answer that question. Um, I mean, I asked the question earlier and Mike kind of spoke up and said, it's related to my data feeds. If it's not in the way that I need it, it's driving me crazy. 
it's, I always say, I ask people questions like, what, what causes you to swear or vent? Because if you're ready to swear or vent, if you're ready to go on Twitter complaining, that's probably a problem that you're experiencing. And it just takes recognition of problems. Um, like I experienced a problem here where I'm actually trying to click on this thing and it didn't work. Now most people would just take a look at that and not even notice it. But if you're, um, if you're aware of problems that you may experience, you tend to look for them um, as well. So it's really just bringing the awareness of recognition of problems and then um, capturing it when it happens. Does that kind of answer the question? Right. But you may have a different perspective, like we could make that more efficient right. if I knew that that was something you're doing again. I didn't even know you were doing that. Right. Yeah, and I always say in a perfect world, we sit down, we have a task to do, we get that task done, and we leave. And what are the problems that we experience that prevent us from doing that? Okay. Any other questions? Have you been able to take this approach and enhance your personal life or, or just the personal skills, uh, all the things around the house that have to be done, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff? It again goes back to a similar type of thing. How do you get other people to also join the bandwagon and do this kind of methodology? Once you get people on board, yes, I think it is possible. Um, the problem resolution process that I walk through here, I don't um, believe I've really used in my personal life. I use it more in my work type world when I'm having problems with websites, when I'm really doing a standard process that I'm trying to deliver on. Um, there are other tools in the Six Sigma methodology that you would use in your personal life. Um, but one example is the tool, there's a tool called 5S. Um, for those of you that are familiar with it, it's really a, a, it's a set of tools that is ensuring consistency of your work environment. So sorting out what do I need and what don't I need, um, organizing what I do need in a way that I can find it, um, and then um, standardizing it so when I go to look for it, it's always in the same place. So it's not like um, today it's over here and tomorrow it's over there and I gotta spend five minutes, 10 minutes searching for the tools that I need or the parts I need. And whenever I talk to people about that and they always talk about it in their home life, what always comes to mind is someone's garage. People always say, you know, my toolbox is a mess. When I need a screwdriver, I can never find a screwdriver. And um, people that use the 5S methodology at home uh, put their tools in a certain way so that when they look at their toolbox, they know exactly where everything is. And if they need to find a screwdriver or a wrench, it's there when they need it and they can just use it. I'd say that tool I've seen used a lot in home. I would say these two tools that I just went through today, I, I really haven't seen too much at home. Any other questions? Okay, um, if there's no other questions, then thank you everyone. Um, I'll be here for a little while, so if you want to come up and ask questions, um, you're more than welcome to. If you want me to send you links to other resources or guides, um, just come up here and maybe give you, me your card, and I can send you some links or um, places you can find other things. But thank you.